Hello and welcome to Big Orbit's Cardfight Vanguard weekly update. My name is James and I will be going through the card churn throughout the past 7 days. So we're still going through the gear chronicle stuff for the clan booster. First up is Steam Tamer Nanny, here to show us some more Chrono Fang support. So as a continuous on rearguard circle during your turn, if you have a Vanguard with Chrono Fang in its card name, this unit gets plus 1000 power for each of your cards in the bind zone. And as an auto in the bind zone with the Generation Break 1 Soul Blast 1, at the end of the battle let your Grade 4 Vanguard with Chrono Fang in its card name attack the Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, call this card to Rearguard Circle. So I'm not sure how often you will be using this unit's second skill, but I have noticed that there are some Rearguard binding skills where you might not be able to easily get a Zodiac Time Beast onto the field, so it would be a good target for that and it gives you an extra attack that could also be quite powerful in the later game thanks to its first skill. We also get yet more Colossi. A great grade 2 is Kegome Idea Drone. It has a continuous on the rearguard circle and guardian circle. If the number of cards in your bind zone is 5 or more, this unit gains resist. And when this card is intercepts during the battle that your gear Colossus Vanguard was attacked, search your deck for up to 1 Zodiac Time Beast, bind it face up and shuffle your deck. If you bind a card, this unit gets shield plus 5,000 till the end of turn. So not only do you get extra defense, but you also get to set up Demiurge, and he's still a 9,000 power, which is really amazing considering a lot of the defensive units that they normally bring out only have 8,000 power, but this actually helps you a lot, so it's a really good card. A new triple R grade 3 for Colossi is Prospathia Idea Drone. So there's an auto on the Vanguard Circle once per turn, Generation Break 2, Soul Blast 1, and choose one of your Grade 2 or less Guardians and bind it face up. When your unit is put into the Guardian Circle, during your battle that your opponent's Vanguard attacks, you may pay the cost. If you do, this card gains plus 15,000 power until the end of the battle. And as an auto, on the Vanguard Circle, Generation Break 1, Counter Blast 1, and choose one card from your drop zone and bind it face up. At the end of your turn, you may pay the cost. If you do, Soul Charge 1, choose one of your rear guards and bind it face up. If you bind a card, your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and puts it to the bottom of his or her deck. So this thing is just a huge bind machine and I feel it makes a great backup for Chrono Fang Tiger. I especially like his first skill as it buys you time which you need to set up for Demiurge anyway and it makes Quintet Walls a lot more useful as you can choose anything from the Quintet Wall which where the chances are good there is going to be a Zodiac Time Beast in there. So you can bind that and get extra power. So it's really really amazing breakthrough. But another grade 2 colossi is the Aperno Idea Drone. So there's an auto on the rearguard circle, counter blast one, and bind the top card of your deck face up. When this unit attacks a vanguard, if you have a gear colossus vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, until the end of the battle, this unit gains plus 2000 power and an auto on the rearguard circle. When this unit's attack hits, set your deck for up to 2 cards, choose a card from among them and bind it face up, and put the rest into the drop zone, and shuffle your deck. If the card you bound with this effect is a Zodiac Time Beast, you counter charge one. Having you pay the cost then needing to hit is always a bit annoying, but you do get to search your deck for two cards, and there are multiple ways to bind cards from the drop zone as well, so, so it's basically saying it's choose two Zodiac Time Beasts and put them into your bind zone, which I think is worth the cost. Just be wise with how you distribute your trigger effects, as it could be good to give all the power to this guy and give something else the criticals that you might get as it's just a better chance of your opponent letting this unit hit. Lastly for Gear Colossi is a Grade 1 Voltaro Idea Drone. As an auto, you put this unit into your soul. When this unit is put into the bind zone from rear guard circle, if you have a Gear Colossus Vanguard and the number of cards in your bind zone is 4 or more, you may pay the cost. If you do, counter charge 1, and if the number of cards in your bind zone is 6 or more, Choose a card from your bind zone and put it into your hand. Choose a card from your hand and put it into your bind zone face up. I'm not sure how useful this card will be as from the looks of it, Gear Colossi don't do a really crazy amount of counter blasting, but counter charges are always a nice thing. Progress Second Dragon is a really great grade 1 for Kronos Command. As it continues on the rearguard circle, this unit cannot be put into the deck due to the effects of your card with Kronos Command in its card name. As an as time leap, auto on rearguard circle, generation break one. When your opponent's unit is put into his or her deck due to the effects from one of your cards, if you have a vanguard with Chronos Command in its card name, you may time leap this unit. 
I feel this is surprisingly strong along with Chronos Command Revolution because it, if you have three of Progress Second Dragon on your field, then you can get rid of your opponent's field with little effort and keep your whole field. I don't think the time loop skill will be as useful as the first skill. It will allow you to search this card out with Gear Eagle. To carry on this Chronos Command support, we have Extend Magne Dragon. As a continuous and rearguard circle, generation break one. If the number of your opponent's rear guards is one or less, this card gains plus 2,000 power. Add an auto on the rearguard circle when your opponent's rearguard is put into his or her deck. If you have a face-up card with Chronos Command in its card name, in your G-Zone, this unit gains power plus 2,000 until the end of turn. So, this card can get up to 21,000 without any boost if your opponent has a full field before using Chronos Command Revolution, which is an amazing amount of power just on its own. I just wish that other control decks would also get this kind of power, but this card does have the benefit of being a Gear Chronicle unit, of course. <laughs> but it would be nice to see more powerful control decks in the future. Steam Maiden Remela brings a little more Legion support to Gear Chronicle. As an auto, with a Canth Blast 1, when this unit is placed on Rear Guard Circle, if you have a Vanguard that is in Legion, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's Grade 1 or less Rear Guards, and your opponent puts that unit to the bottom of their deck. So it's not a terrible skill, but Gear Chronicle Legion isn't really a thing at the moment, so until they make better Legions, this card will mostly be staying away from most of the action. A couple of Zodiac Time Beasts from the Trial deck have been revealed. Chrono Beat Buffalo is a simple Grade 2, with Continuous in the Rear Guard Circle. If you have a Grade 3 or Greater Zodiac Time Beast on your Vanguard Circle, this unit gains plus 2000 power. And Chrono Ethos Jackal, who has Auto on the Rear Guard Circle, Generation Break 1, and when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if you have a Zodiac Time Beast on your Vanguard Circle, this unit gets plus 4000 power until the end of the battle. Jekyll is easily the better of these two, as being able to have a grade 1 that can attack for 11,000 is always great. But at least if their skills aren't that great, you won't feel as bad for constantly binding them. Now I saved this for last, as I know there are a lot of mixed feelings about this clan. But two new cards for Token Rambu have been shown. The first one is the grade 1 named Mitsuno Kami Yoshiyuki Tobu. And there's a continuous in the rear guard circle with Shinken Hisatsu, where it's a limit break for if you only have 3 damage. This unit can attack from the back row. And there's an auto on the rear guard circle, generation break 1. Counter Blast 1 and Soul Blast 1. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, this unit gains plus 9,000 power until the end of the battle. So it's pretty nice to see a 16k Grade 1 that can also attack from the back row. Though the cost is quite pricey with a Counter Blast and a Soul Blast, but you will definitely see use as it could be a really great attack on your opponent, especially if they're not expecting it. And the second one is a Grade 3 for the Trial deck, who is Kogitsune Maru Toku. So there's an auto on the Vanguard Circle, Counter Blast 1. During your turn, when your G unit would stride, you may pay the cost. If you do, pick up the top card of your deck, put it to on the top or bottom of your deck, draw a card, and Soul Charge 1. His skill is similar to Suzunoo's second skill, though this card does not gain the 5k power and one critical that Suzunoo would get from his GB2. The Soul Charge is really handy though, as there are a fair amount of Soul Blasting cards in Token Rambu. So that is all the cards for this week. If you have any questions about the ruling, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I will try and answer them as best as I can. And if you want to stay up to date with all the Vanguard news, be sure to watch next week's episode where I will be going through the card showing throughout the next 7 days. So I'll see you then. Bye!